Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm gonna to be showing you how I've decided to carry my bikes over my bed uh, while still maintaining all my storage space underneath. Uh, maybe you're towing a travel trailer, maybe you're using some sort of cargo uh, basket or something like that, and you can't actually use a you know bike carrier that fits in your receiver hitch, or maybe you don't want to dangle them over the tailgate. For whatever reasons, for me, I need the space in my bed, I tow a trailer, so um, this is what I've come up with. Now, specifically, my setup is going to be for my um, Retrax Pro. This is the, uh, the XR. It's got the actual T-channels in it to where I can attach different bed racks to it. Uh, you could do this with other tonneau covers if you get like, uh, I've seen like Billy bars. There's a few different, um, you know, bars that go across that can still attach to your bed rails, even though you have a tonneau cover. So just check those out. Um, but this is the way that I'm doing it for this setup specifically. Now, I was fortunate enough on our travel trailer, it came with these uh, Rhino Rack Vortex bars up on the top. So we had a full roof rack up on the top. Now, I try to load some stuff up there, but it's like 11 or 12 feet off the ground. And uh, it's not fun pulling all that heavy stuff up there. So I decided I'm never gonna put bikes up there, never gonna put a kayak up there. Uh, so I pulled these off. I'm gonna use these to go across my bed like that. To attach them, I have this Rhino Rack Quick Mount Leg Set. Now for these ones, the mounting hardware will slide into the little uh, grooves that are, are on my um, tonneau cover. But uh, like I said, if you're using different types of crossbars or uh, some other setup, uh, these bike mounts will still work for you as well. All right, and the bike mounts that I'm using are this uh, the Swagman upright roof rack. Now, the way that this works is it says that it's good for um, crossbars that are two inches to three and a quarter inches wide. These ones are just, um, at the, the max with about three and a quarter, three and three eighths. All right, now with that long introduction out of the way, let's go ahead and let's get started and I will show you how I'm gonna set this up. Now, my specific track setup requires these little uh, square nuts to go down in here and then those will slide down into place. And so to do this, I've noticed that they're, you know, pretty tight. And so I just start that a little bit and I get it down in there and then you gotta, kind of force it into place. And if that doesn't work, you just got to give it a little persuasion. So I have two feet on each side, right? That's two nuts for each foot. So that's a total of four. I'm going to do this again on the other side. Following the instructions that came with the packet, I'm just going to take that screw, uh, lock washer, flat washer, Right, and then that just drops right down into here. All depending on your specific setup, you may need to use the center holes, you may need to use these wide holes. I'm gonna go wide. You just wanna make sure that you don't tighten everything down until you get it, both of those lined up. Right, and then we're still gonna keep it loose because we're gonna be sliding this back and forth into place uh, to adjust it where we want it. So I'm gonna do this all the way around and get all four of those mounting feet ready to go. Now, depending on your bike setup, um, my biggest one has a 29 inch tire on it. So I'm just gonna divide that into what, 15 inches? Let's go 16 inches to be safe. And that's how much room I'm gonna need to go forward for those racks. Okay, and if you are using those Rhino Rack bars and uh, you know you can just follow those instructions and put those feet on. Mine already had the feet on because I pulled them off the top of my camper. Um, so uh, if you need that, just put it in the comments and I'll try to help you out. So using my measurements coming out to that 16 inch mark, it looks like I'm gonna be interfering right with my um, handle to my tonneau cover. So I'm actually gonna come back uh, to the 20 inch mark, give me plenty of room to get that up. Now the instructions on the bike rack say that the crossbars can't be any closer than 28 inches together. What I did was I just measured my largest bike and uh, that comes out to about 40 inches. So I'm gonna make that 40 inches on center. I figure the largest bike would be under the greatest load. Um, so I'm gonna start off that way. And if I need to make any adjustments, I can slide these accordingly. So taking 40 inches from uh, center of the other rack to 40 inches to the center of this foot, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that in. And your measurements may be different than mine. All right, now that I have that in, I'm gonna repeat it on the other side and we should be ready to put our racks on. All right, so now you can see what that looks like going around. I haven't put the end caps on yet, but there we have our racks. Now it's time to assemble the actual bike rack itself. This is if you have the narrower bars. I'm going to be using these mounting hardware, or these little U-bolts, uh, whatever you wanna call them, uh, because I have the larger bars. Uh, so your application might be a little bit different. Basically, what's going to happen is this, these two, 
go together like this, your bike sits up on there, and this is gonna be up there hanging onto the crossbar of the bike. So uh, let me assemble this, and then that'll make more sense for you. Now that I have this assembled, right, so it's just the two bolts here, carriage bolt there, right, all these nylon lock nuts on the bottom of everything. Um, this mounts with two bolts here. Um, I'm gonna put these little plastic end caps on so that I don't scratch anything on my truck. And then these are going to slide over the bar and mount here on each side. And then it looks like on this side, so then it mounts down through here like this. All right, so that goes under there like that. It does not say in the instructions to add a washer, but I'm gonna do so anyway. All right, and we just got these little knobs that are gonna tighten these up. From what I can understand, those knobs are the number one complaint. All right, here's the last part. This is it. Let's get this lined up. That's fun. Need lots of hands. All right, I'm tightening these down pretty tight because I heard these knobs like to come off. And uh, I want everything kind of flexed and under some pressure so that it doesn't vibrate like that and doesn't do that. All right, there we go. Let's test this thing out. All right, there we go, final adjustments. Pretty solid. Could be more solid, but I think it'll hold in there. All right, let's get these other ones on and then uh, we'll see if all four fit. Fingers crossed. All right, well, I got it all done. I'm getting all sweaty. <laughs> but uh, once I got everything figured out, once I got everything adjusted, I was able just to do those other three um, using the same exact holes and everything. And um, it all mounted up pretty much without a hitch. Now, when I'm looking at this, just my initial impression, whenever you look like you see here, like this is already starting to bend down. Um, my bike's not a heavy bike, but I think it's just the overall dimensions of it is just a little bit bigger than what this rack can support. I don't know if you could go, and I, I ride a medium bike. Um, you know, like I said, it's a 29 inch rim, but um, you know, I don't know how much bigger you could get. Looking at everything else, just be sure whenever you are strapping this down that you're not gonna let this buckle get into uh, your rims right here. So that is very important, especially if you have um, something like, uh, you know, a, a brake that rides on the rim. I didn't have any issues with the knobs. Um, I did run into a few missing washers. Luckily I have some on hand. So I, you know, was able to do that. Um, everything is pretty solid. Actually the flex that I have, I don't know if you can see it. It's coming from the actual crossbar itself. It looks like everything's pretty rigid. And this is an important thing for me. Right, right into that. And that's probably gonna get a little bit annoying. And what I'll probably do is I'll end up 
sliding this, I'll just loosen these up and slide that in to avoid that. I have plenty of room. I actually left enough room for me to um, be able to get up in between these bikes and attach everything. So I'm really quite happy with it. I will let you know, I'm gonna do a road test later this afternoon when we're uh, heading 130 miles on the road with our trailer. So we're gonna see how this does. I'm actually quite impressed with the way that this turned out. I mean, these bike racks, I got all four of these racks. They're about $50 on Amazon. Links to everything is gonna be down in the description. I pretty much bought all four of these for the price of one name brand uh, bike rack. So I'm, I'm really happy with that cost point. Oh, and the box, the packaging, everything does say that it has a lifetime warranty, but I'll believe that when I see it, right? These things are 50 bucks each. By the time the company made you pay for shipping to send it back, uh, you might as well just buy another one if you can even get a hold of them at all. So I do not count on that customer service being there. Not that it's not, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe they have an excellent customer service. I just don't usually plan on those things at this type of price point. All right, we made it back and the bike rack performed just like I thought it would. Um, it was flawless. Uh, everything was solid all the way over, all the way back, almost 300 miles. And uh, there was never any doubt that it was going to do its job. Um, there was uh, some bumpy roads and different things like that. It was really windy at one point. And again, the bikes, uh, they held in there. And I think this is really gonna be a solution for a long time. Um, my only real complaint is that it takes about an extra 15 minutes uh, whenever you're loading up to put those bikes on there. It takes about an extra 15 minutes when you're unloading. Um, if you keep the racks off of your truck like I do, they're not a permanent fixture. Uh, that takes a little bit to, of time as well. So uh, just keep that in mind if this is your solution. Um, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And if at any point you found this helpful, make sure you hit that like button. And as always, uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. Um, all right, everyone, I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and this is the amount of storage that they take up. So I just found a nice little corner. Um, I might put some racks in in my garage or find a designated space on some shelving that I already have. Uh, but for now, this is going to work.